Now, R is a very powerful package for visualizing data. And when we are dealing with lots of data, R comes very handy. Now, to read a file, what we can do is simply click on Import Data Set. Now, my data file is on the, on the desktop. So I'll simply click from text file. So now you can see it gives you a preview of the data. So there are various columns like vehicle, FM, mileage, and so on with the data. So there is a title or heading at the top. So we should choose uh, yes for heading. And then if you simply say import, your data gets imported into R. And you can see this data file here. So I would say you close this. The data file is going to be here anyway. And you can see on the right, you can see that there is a vehicle data file which has seven variables and 1,624 observations. Now, if you want to look at that data, remember when when you imported, like uh, use this option to import data set, R automatically generated some codes that you can see here. So it was able to read this CSV file from the desktop. So this is the link or path where the file was. And then using view, we were able to see that file. So you can see those variables like uh, vehicle number, FM is a failure month, mileage, like miles at which a car has failed. So this is a vehicle failure data. LH is labor hours, how much time the technician took to correct the problem. LC is labor cost, material cost, and the state in which vehicle failed. If you want to look at top few rows, you can say head vehicle and run this and you can see top six rows are shown here similarly tail and then you have bottom few rows shown now one of the simplest uh, visualization tools people use is a histogram Suppose we want to make histogram of this column LC, labor cost. In R, you can simply type HIST for histogram. And then you have to tell which variable you want to use from the data file. So our data file is called vehicle. And then to indicate which variable you want to plot in the histogram, you have to use a dollar sign. And then you can say LC. So when you run this command, on the right side, you can see there is a histogram. If you have uh, any question about any command, a simple thing is, in the console, if you type a question mark and H-I-S-T and hit enter, it will bring up some R documentation related to H-I-S-T. So you can see that this command HIST for histogram comes with several options, x-axis limit, x-labels, main heading, and so on. So let's uh, try to do that. So we'll say HIST, LC, and I'm putting a comma, and then I'm going to hit enter just to keep everything clean. So I'm going to include uh, one of the options called breaks, and I'm going to specify breaks as 30 like how many bars you want in the histogram. If you want to limit your x-axis, you can say x lim equals, and then we can specify within C, so 0 to 1500, comma 1500 are within brackets. And then again, I'm putting a comma and hitting enter. And I want to specify y limit equals C, and again 0 to so if you go back to plot, so y-axis seems to be actually more than 800. So I would say maybe 1,000. We can also specify color of the bars. So let's say we want to make it green. We can specify x-labels 
Y label, main title. So once we have all this, we can select this whole thing and run them at once. So you can see there is a histogram. So now because uh, we have increased number of uh, columns by specifying 30 and uh, Y axis, now we can say actually 500. So instead of 1000, I would say 500. You can always play play with that and see what you need and uh, get appropriate histogram. If you don't like green and you want to have a blue color, you can try that by simply changing color to blue. What this histogram shows, you can see it is a right skewed histogram. It is not a symmetrical histogram because the tail is on the right side. And most of the observations are located between 0 and uh, about 400. Most of uh, this type of vehicle failure requires a labor cost of about $400. But there are some vehicles uh, that end up uh, where you end up spending about $1,500, which is obviously a lot. But it is very, very rare. Maybe there were some other failure modes involved. But majority of the cost is within 0 to 400 or 300 maybe. So histogram, as you know, shows three things. One is, what is the shape of the histogram? In this case, it is right skewed. Where is the center of gravity, like where most of the values are concentrated? So in this picture, it is somewhere here. And histogram also shows you how much variability exists in data. So in this case, it goes from like 0 to almost 1500. One of the variables in this data is state. So suppose you want to see for each state how many vehicles have failed. So we can say, we can type here vehicle and then state. Now please note that because in state S is capital, so you have to use capital S. If you use a small case S, you can try that. Try running with a small case S, you get some error. So I'll change it to S. And then you can also look at the way I showed you earlier, like a question mark and plot. So what options exist with plot? You can always play with those options and modify your graph to look better, just like what we did with histogram. So simply use pi. And then you have to say table and specify the variable. So in vehicle data file, my variable is state and then run this. So again, it may not look very clean because you have like 50 different states and number of failures in some states could be very small. But some top ones are, you can see here, California, Texas, Florida are the top three states out of all the states. You can type box plot. Now, the way you specify the variables in box plot is something like this. I'm going to use mileage variable and then this is a tilde sign and then I would say state and then put a comma and then specify name of the data file, so vehicle. What it will do is, it will draw a box plot for mileage variable separately for each state. So for each state, there will be one box plot. So you can be anywhere in the line and then say run. It gives you box plot for each state. Box plot indicates uh, like if the box is higher, that means in those states, failures are occurring at higher mileage versus if a box is low, then failures are occurring at lower mileage. It could tell you a lot of information about how the failures are occurring in each state. Another common plot is a scatter plot where you deal with two variables. So for that also we can use plot command and specify two variables. So suppose we are interested in labor hours and labor cost and specify labor hours, LH. So I'm using that name from the data file and then put a comma, again vehicle and labor cost. So if you run this, it should give you a scatter plot. So this is the scatter plot. 
the relation between two variables labor hours and labor cost is very clear it is a linear kind of relation which means when the technicians uh, spend more time on a vehicle problem the labor cost goes up so when labor hours go up labor cost also goes up so more or less a linear pattern you can plot several scatter plot at once and this is uh, done by using a ps command as you know the scatter plot is done only for numerical variables so we should not use non numerical variables and in this case for example state is not useful we cannot make a scatter plot including state variable and we'll also not use the vehicle column we'll ignore first and last columns we only want to deal with two second column which is fm failure month then third mileage fourth fifth and sixth so i would say vehicle and this is how you specify which columns you want or which variables you want included so once i run this ps command this is what you get so for example this plot is for lh and lc so labor hours and labor cost similarly this plot is for labor hours versus machine cost so the relation is not that strong between mileage and failure month so although relation is not that strong but it is positive kind of relation as mileage increases failure month also increases or vice versa and that is expected also so if you look at uh, this command here before using scatter plot 3d they have called a library now when you are doing this for the first time you will have to install this package called scatter plot 3d so let me show you how to install this package so when you are in r you should click on packages and then hit install and then you can say scatter plot 3d in fact it's already there so i can select that and say install once i wait for a few minutes maybe few seconds it will be done installing the package so once it has been installed then you don't have to actually install this again and again you only need to install once and then you can call library and then we can use this command scatter plot 3d so it gives you a 3d plot you can always like change the labels names colors by changing the options there is a contour plot so if you want to try i can simply cut and paste obviously uh, this plus sign we don't need so what uh, this command is doing it is uh, using a uh, inbuilt data called volcano and then making a contour plot so if i select this whole thing and run i'll get what is called contour plot what so this command also is using the same data inbuilt data called volcano and then giving some values to other parameters it gives you this kind of 3d plot